The market has been all over the place. It's up one day, down one day. It's been a crazy week, crazy volatility. But here today, we're going to talk about what caused that volatility. We're going to give you six ways uh, to take advantage of the big market dips. And we're also going to talk about drips and, of course, the disadvantages. So you keep it locked right here on the Prince of Investment, right here with your host, the one and only Prince Dykes. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, you are now tuned in to the Prince of Investment live here on Think Tech Hawaii, coming all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via the beautiful state, beautiful, beautiful city of Honolulu, Hawaii. Once again, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. Drop comments below if you got questions. And always hit that bell icon to keep, well, hit the bell icon to get the notifications as the new content drops. And always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. The market has been all over the place. Um, I think it was on Wednesday, we had the market dive down 800 points, seeming like out of the blue, out of nowhere. What happened? Are we headed towards another recession? Are we headed towards another market downturn? What's going on? What happened? So first, let's talk about what caused that volatility. So the volatility came from, of course, as you all guys and girls already know, the trade wars. The trade wars that have been going on now for the past year or two or whatever the case may be. One day we're friends. Next day it's a tariff. Next day China does put a tariff on us. We put a tariff on China. We shake hands. Then we come with another tariff. Then we remove the tariff. We don't know what's going on, right? But this is the thing. As we talk, as we have trade agreements across the world, the market is ran by fear and greed. Anytime trade talks have happened, even though nothing has financially happened, the market reacts. When people just hear something going wrong, the market reacts. Because what is the market? The market is a leading indicator. It's an indication of what's bound to happen next. So when you have a leading indicator, the market is something that we look at to see where the economy is heading. So when we see this um, disruption going on with tariffs and China is saying this and America is saying this with President Trump, everybody automatically becomes fearful because, hey, if China raises their prices of the goods and services, guess what? How many companies like Apple, Nike, Disney, whoever else does business with China because China makes a lot of our stuff. If they put a tariff on our goods, that means the prices of our goods and services are going up, right? And if the prices of our goods and services are going up, that means people buy less. And when people buy less, that means companies make less money. And when company makes less money, that means the stock doesn't perform as well. You guys catch my drift, right? So there's one big change that's going on. So what China ended up doing, China ended up devaluing its currency. For prime example, let's say if a product costs us um, let's say China charges Apple a hundred bucks to have an iPhone made in China and, and shipped to Apple there in America. So when President Trump came and said, hey, we're going to put in a 10% tariff on phones, right? This takes the price of the China iPhone and it takes it to $110. Something that's probably going to be passed off to a customer. Now, essentially what President Trump is doing when he places a tariff on something, he's raising the price. When he raises the price of something, what happens when he raises the price? That makes it less desirable to other customers. Maybe a person may look at a Samsung phone now because it's cheaper. And he does that to give domestic companies an advantage over foreign companies, right? So with this fact, you guys heard me say it 10 million times. If a customer gets into it with a business owner, the customers will always win. Because what is a business owner with no customers? Nothing, right? But what is a business owner, uh, what is a, a group of customers with no business owner? Somebody's going to become a business owner. For prime example, if no more, if uh, we just came out and just said, hey, China, you can no longer make the iPhones. Do you think Apple is just going to stop making iPhones? No. I guarantee you somebody in Mexico, somebody in Texas, somebody in New York will say, hey, guess what? I can make the iPhone because the customer will always win when he's in an argument with the business owner. So I think um, if you read President Trump's first book, The Art of the Deal, he has extreme leverage in this situation, in my opinion, of what I know. So that's what causes the volatility. Now we're going to get into six ways to take advantage of the market dip. 
the market took a dive. You watched it take a dive. You probably watched your portfolio go all over the place, and you're wondering, hey, what can I do? Of course, if you're a swing trader, if you're a day trader, you know, you look for perfect entry points or a forex trader. You look for perfect entry points and exit points. But let's say if you're a regular person, you don't have time to sit there and watch a portfolio all day, when to buy, when to sell. You're like me. You got a regular job. You're everyday Joe Blow, right? What can you do when you see the market um, takes a huge dip like this? Every time I see the Dow Jones drop more than 500 points in a single day, it already, it automatically triggers me to look for something to buy every single time, right? So the first thing to to take advantage of the market is rule number one, you got to have cash. People love to say cash is trash. Cash is no good. Uninvested cash is this, that, or whatnot. But cash is awesome because guess what? When the market takes a dip and you have no money to be able to buy anything, you can't take advantage of the dip. What good is it? I always use this analogy. What good is it? There's a 90% off sale at Walmart, but you have no money. That's no good because you can't take advantage of the market. So one thing, you got to have cash, right? Two, now that you have cash, what's another way you can take advantage? If you want to keep it simple and conservative and you're like, hey, I'm not really into stocks, but I like to invest a little bit. One thing you can do, head on over to an index fund, an S&P 500 index fund, something like stock symbol SWPPX. No, I'm not sponsored by, I think that's Charles Schwab, S&P 500 index. No, because the reason why I recommend them because they have the lowest cost, which is like a 0.20 no, a 0 0.02 index uh, expense ratio. It's only like 40, 45 bucks right now in the market. Pays a 1.8% dividend and it's commission free, meaning you can buy it if you have TD Ameritrade, you can buy it with E-Trade and not catch that $6, $7 fee. If you know something better, drop a comment below. But that's one thing. You can just say, hey, market took a big dip. Guess what? I'm a long-term, me, I'm a long-term bullish person meaning that I believe that the market would do well over time. Yes, it will have dips. Yes, we will see another recession. Yes, we will probably slide into a, a depression. Hopefully we don't get that bad. But if we do, I believe over time, we will dig ourselves out of it over time. So long term, I'm a bullish person. So when I see a big dip, slide on over there, grab yourself an index fund. Now, another thing. Now, this is a little bit more riskier. Grab some stocks that are hitting that are hit the hardest by the market. I like tech stocks. I like an Apple, for prime example, or Microsoft. These companies got hit hard, 5% drops. Disney got hit hard, 5 6% in one day. When I see the overall market just takes a huge slide that goes off and tell me there's some type of fear in the market, why did Apple take such a big hit? Most of the time, they're just collateral damage. Everybody's down this day. So I look at, I like to look at a tech company or a tech company I know very well, a sturdy company, a company that you know nothing has happened to. Nothing has happened to Disney. Nothing had happened to Berkshire Hathaway. Nothing had happened to Google. Nothing had happened to Facebook. It's just the whole market took a, a big wave and everybody was down during the wave. So I like to pick out like an apple that took a big hit. And those are the ones I like to get into because it's a company I've been watching already anyway. I like to get in to see it turn around. Got to be careful. We're going to get into that. We're gonna, that's going to be in a disadvantage of this. But that's one of the things I like to do to be able to jump in and grab a dip. Because when you guys see the dip, you guys and girls see the dip and you don't know what to do, it's just, hey, a dip just happened. Now, another thing you can do, a little bit more riskier, Something that a lot of people tell you not to do. I'm giving you the disclaimer. We're gonna go over it in the we're gonna go over it in the disadvantages as well. Grabbing a bullish or bearish ETF on the SP 500. You can do it on the Dow Jones, you can do it on the NASDAQ as well. The thing about it is a, a bullish or bearish ETF, something like SPXL. That's a bearish, that's a bullish, I meant to say it's a bullish. It's a leverage bullish ETF. That means that whatever the market does, if the market does good, it does very well. The market is not doing good, it does very bad. So when the market takes a huge dip down and you're probably waiting on the rebound, you can jump in there with a, with a stock symbol, something like a SPXL, which is a leverage, bearish, well, I keep saying bearish, bullish ETF. Now, on the reverse side of the house, when you see the market rebound, it's going to go back up to all-time high. 
and the market is scorching hot and it hitting all time highs, that's when you may want to look into a bearish ETF, leverage ETF, something like SPXS. What that does is that when the market takes its next nosedive, which it will do, it will rain again. When the market takes its next nosedive, this is something that your portfolio could be doing very well. and You can sell it off to be able to make a long term play. For prime example, when the market slid down on Wednesday, 800 points in one day, SPWX went up 9, 10% in one day. When the whole market was down, 800 points, nothing was doing well, you had SPXS that had done well. And let's say if you had a nice little chunk there to hedge your portfolio, that could have been something you could have sold and then jumped into some long-term plays. That could have provided you the capital to do long-term plays. And on top of that, Let's say if you brought it when the market's at an all-time high and you're waiting on the next dip, you could be collecting dividends along the way. I don't know why my lips go dry. Had to take a swig of water there. Now, let's go on to the next one. You have gold and bonds. Gold and bonds. Of course, when you see that market take that big slide, what's gold going to do? It's going to spike. What bonds, long-term bond, long-term Bond ETF, something like Bravo, Lima, uh, what's the V stand for? Victor, Bravo, Lima, Victor, or a um, ILTB. That's another one. Those are long-term bond ETFs. They pay monthly dividends. And when the market takes a big slide downward, they kind of hold their own weight. Sometimes, and most of the time, they go up. They go up when the market goes down because people run into gold and commodities and bonds when the market is doing bad. So guess what? Gold is going to hit that spike. I'm not a long-term gold person, but it is a way to hedge the market. And bonds are another way to do it as well. So to take advantage of the dip, you could, if you already own the bonds, if you already own some gold, that could be a time to sell some gold and bonds to be able to provide you some cash to be able to make long-term plays while the equities have slid. Right? Another thing, um, we had the we want to we want to go to one, the six we said bullish and bearish leverage ETFs, index fund, stocks that took a big slide, uh, um, gold and bond, having cash, and another one the volatility index V I X. Today is up by seven percent. On Friday today the market slid all the way down. Uh, 300 points and it did a reversal and went back up and went positive all over the place. How can you take advantage of volatility? Anytime there's volatility in the market, there. every time there's fear in the market, there's volatility. One of the ways you can take advantage of that, you can invest into the VIX. That's Victor India X, X-ray. That's something that you can take advantage of when the market starts to go all this volatility index. That's when these things got to go up. Now, Let's get into the disadvantages of buying the dip. There are disadvantages when you try to go out here and buy the dip. Number one, you're speculating, right? A long-term conservative investor, you don't go out and you don't go out here and try to speculate and take a dip on the market. Now, one thing is a very conservative move. You go in there and buy some index funds, close your account, don't worry about it. But when you are speculating, if you're telling me, hey, the market is down, I'm going to buy a bunch of it, because you're speculating that it's going to go back up. Let's say the market went down 800 points and you went out there and brought a leveraged ETF like SPXL. Then the next day, the market continues to slide and continues to slide and continues to slide. You know, you don't you don't know. Like when I saw the market go down 800 points and I saw China manip manipulating its economy, not its economy, manipulating, manipulating its, its currency. I got the hiccups for, for some reason. I got very, I got nervous because I haven't seen China manipulate his currency in my modern time of following the market. So I had to call some of my old heads, some of my mentors who got a little gray on their hair out of New York. And I just had to say, hey, you know, explain this to me, break it down to me. They broke it down to me. And uh, I made some very uh, long term plays, right? Some of the ones I just kind of went over and discussed. Market returns, happy day for me. I'm collecting dividends along the way. But the disadvantage is, if you are someone who's trying to chase the market, oh, what is it going to do next move? What is it going to do tomorrow? What is it going to do next week? This stuff, stuff like that. Oh, the federal government is going to cut rates and the market is going to react this way. Now you're speculating. And the disadvantage of speculating, over 92% of speculators 
doesn't know what Mr. Market is going to do. So when you're trying to buy a dip and you're trying to, hey, let me get a bearish ETF. Let me get a bullish ETF. Let me jump here and there. You could be running yourself into a rut of trying to time the market. We don't want to time the market. We just want to take advantage of the dip. What I do, oh, boom, I see uh, a company that, that's been on my watch list for a while, Apple, Facebook, whatever the case may be. It went on sale. I go in, buy a couple of shares, log out, I'm done. All right? I go in, buy some more of my index fund, log out, I'm done. I may go buy a bullish um, a bullish ETF because I'm long term, log out, and I'm done. Right? Let the dividends work their magic. Let compounding interest work its magic and go ahead on. Right? But don't get into the point where you're trying to speculate, speculate, speculate because only the top five, six, eight percent only got about one or two friends that I've seen do that that are extraordinary at that. And the rest of everybody else is trash because they were so good, they wouldn't be on YouTube and radio and stuff like that trying to sell it to you, right? They'll keep them secret to themselves, go off and become wealthy. Like Lars Crow just said, and invest in Demystified. If you know what the market is going to do and you got an edge on the market, turn this off, go get rich. But if you don't, stay tuned. You might better catch some stuff. Now, another thing is the disadvantages of that are fees. When you're jumping in and out of the market, you're buying and you're selling and you're selling and you're buying, you're getting transaction fees, which is horrible for a very small account. An account with $500 in it, $600, $1,000, sometimes even two, three thousand, anything up on the $5,000, it's a very, very, very small account. And if you're in there buying and selling, buying and selling, you get, you collecting all these trade fees to what, you know, could be killing your portfolio. Don't do that. Stay away from that. You got to be very mindful of what you're doing. That's why I'm giving you guys S&P 500 indexes that are commission free, right? So, but if you don't keep it for more than 90 days, then the commission is not longer free, no longer free. You stack your cash in there. You wait till the market takes a downturn, maybe buy a little bit more. Uh, you're buying every month anyway. You don't worry about it. Now, another thing we're going to get into, we're going to talk about how drip and dollar cost averaging helps you out drip dividend reinvestment plan what happens is let's say myself i own apple or let's say if i own a, a verizon at&t those are companies that pay div dividends some will pay monthly some pay quarterly some pay semi-annually some pay annually and what you what drip does is you're saying hey when you pay me the dividends don't send them to me just buy me more shares now if your drip was kicking in when the market was taking a, uh, a slide, guess what? You got some more shares at a low price. If you was doing that, great on you, right? Now, if you wasn't doing that, if you wasn't um, taking advantage of the market, right? If you wasn't, um, let's say, if, even if I'm not buying anything, like in my son's portfolio, my wife's portfolio, guess what? They got stocks that are constantly the dividends are constantly buying new shares at different intervals and the market happens to be down guess what you get some things at a lower price that goes back to dollar cost averaging that's how drip can be your friend because you don't have time to be in there watching the market every day but if you're using things like the drip program or things like that you could be taking advantages to buy you shares over time at a lower price so let's go what we talked about we talked about what caused that volatility in the market? We gave you six ways to take advantages of the dip. We gave you the disadvantages of trying to take advantages of dips. And we also gave you some pros and cons of how, we gave you the pros of how DRIP, the dividend reinvestment plan, and dollar cost averaging is your friend doing market volatility or could be your friend. Well, that concludes this, this, that concludes this episode. Once again, thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Prince Dykes, the Prince of Investing. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.